Let's look at an example of a PID controller applied to control a mass spring damper system. So M here is our mass. It's attached to ground through a spring with spring constant K and a damper of damping constant B. The position of the mass we denote as X. And let's say that we're trying to control that mass to reach this position, X desired. And we're allowed to apply a force directly to the mass. So what a PID controller would do, let's look at the proportional term first. It attaches a virtual spring. So let me draw a virtual ground over here. And imagine now I attach a spring to the mass. And that spring constant is k sub p. And the rest length of this k sub p puts it the end at x desired. So now whatever this displacement is, it's, we're going to take that displacement, multiply it by k sub p, and that's the pulling force that this spring provides. So if we plot that position of the mass as a function of time, we want it to reach x desired. And this, so let me draw a dotted line there. So the spring is going to pull the mass, but remember the spring has to be extended a little bit beyond its rest length or else it won't apply any force in this direction. So that means we're going to have to have some error here, otherwise the spring, this case of P spring, wouldn't be applying any force. So the response of the mass when we attach the spring might look something like this. And settles out so that there is some non-zero steady state error here. Okay. So apart from the fact that we have this error at the end, we also have the fact that we overshoot and oscillate. And we don't want to see that kind of behavior. So now we can add a damper. So if we add a virtual damper here, and this is our derivative term, k sub d, now what that's going to do is basically provide, since the desired velocity is zero at rest here at x desired, it's going to provide a damper that tries to bring the mass to zero velocity. So the net effect of that is it's going to take this response and damp it out. Okay, so now we get a nice smooth response, but we still have this steady state error. Now we could increase both k sub p and k sub d, make it stiffer and increase the damping. That would decrease the steady state error because we don't need to have as much extension of this spring to get the same force out of it. So that would allow this to come up closer to x desired, but it won't be able to get rid of all of the steady state error completely. Because again, remember, if there's no error, then the spring won't be applying any force and therefore it won't be able to overcome that spring. So the last thing we can try is try the integral term. So remember, we have this ki times the integral of the error. And so what happens here is that as this error integrates over time, there's going to be a force developing that's trying to cancel it out. So the effect here is going to be, instead of settling at this steady state error, the integral term should cause it, if implemented properly, to approach the actual desired value. So again, this k sub p provides the spring to get it to the right position. k sub i provides another kind of spring, but acting on the integral of the error instead of the error itself. And k sub d provides the damping to prevent it from oscillating and overshooting.